a Cards with Michael production. What's up, everyone? It's Cards with Michael, and today we're going to be opening not one Call Time Collector Booster, but two Call Time Collector Boosters. And generously, we are sponsored today by John O. Thanks so much, John, for the sponsoring and supporting the content. We're going to look at the market prices, that started, the TCG low prices of these Call Time Collector Boosters, talk about what these are going to potentially go in the future, and, uh, you know, talk about how they've been kind of prices have been trending in the last, I don't know, couple of days, I want to say. We last did our, of course, uh, battle video number five uh, on the 9th of February. And today is the 14th. It's been five days. Um, I actually checked the prices for the index, the index that I use, which is one of every single possible variant of card, including non-foil cards, which are actually not possible in these Call Time Collector boosters. And the index actually has gone up. When we last revisited uh, when we first started keeping track on February 3rd, the index was at $3,000, which was unrealistic. On the 5th, it dropped down to $2,200, and on the 9th, it was $1,500. And today, it is actually $1,787, around $1,800. So it's actually prices have rebounded up, and most of it is because of the top three, which is Vorinclex, Valky, and Goldspan Dragon. Goldspan Dragon, of course, is kind of a newcomer to this um, Foil Extended Spirit. Uh, and uh, it looks like that card's just gonna be super good. Uh, honorable mention, of course, to Coma, Cosmo Serpent, and Orvar the All Form. And of course, the most valuable two rares are the Foil Extended Art World Tree and the Foil Showcase Turgrid. All right, here we have an Egon God of Death Showcase variant, is our first showcase rare, and a Varagoth Blood Sky Sire is our foil showcase rare. All right, all right. So we'll just kind of put our rares here, extend our slot, and of course, our commander deck theme deck slot. All right, so that was pack number one. Not too bad, not too bad. Gonna keep cracking these until we get the Born Clex, ideal. Um, John O did request that if I did open the Born Clex, go ahead and put that in a penny sleeve as he does plan on getting it graded. And personally, that's actually what I did. I set my Born Clex, the one that was opened in that first video. It is with BGS now. <laughs> though, though I did send it economy, so I don't plan on receiving it back for about, I don't know, a year. All right, we have our first Blight Step Pathway, Borderless Art. All right, Seer Step Pathway, put that right there. And a Foil Extended Art Mask Wood Nexus. All right, on to the next, on to the next. So it is kind of fascinating. Uh, Phyrexian Born Clex has actually gone back up. The lowest listing on TCG Player is 330. The non-foil version uh, is at about 50. And the foil showcase version, which is actually a completely different art, is actually kind of in the $100 range. So those are kind of the cards that make Call Time Collectors still kind of worth opening. And it's it's actually kind of wild um, that they've gone up like that. We have a Battle Mammoth. All right, it's a little borderless mythic there. And hey, look at that! Gold span and foil extended art, one of the best pulls possible in this set. The art is super cool. Look at this dragon. And we'll give that a little penny sleep. That's all we have set up here. A little penny sleep for our first great hit. Gold span dragon, of course, in play is just bonkers. It accelerates you on mana so that even if it dies after it attacks, uh, you can still you likely cast some type of bomb or mid-range bomb in the next turn. Uh, the Goldspan Dragon, of course, is a 5-mana 4-4 Haste Dragon, so it can kill Planeswalkers, kill opponents. It's just, it kind of has it all. Hey, and there we go with the World Tree Extended Art. All right, all right. So we're off the Realm Eater and a Tie Mark Hell. All right, Borderless Planeswalker. I love it. Finn the Fang Bear and a Foil Extended Art Reckless Crew. All right, all right. I love the art on these. It just straight up tells a story. It is better than the art from previous sets. Uh, I just love it. It has, it's, it's already preparing us for that D&D &D vibe uh, come that D&D &D set in the summer. All right, here we go on to the next pack. Tales of the Ancestors it is our commander card. All right, Immersum Predator, Extended Art Rare. Here's our foil rare, Arnie Broken Brow. All right, we're right at the frost. Halvar, God of Battle. I thought this card would take off a little bit more, but in competitive play, it's, you know, it's not as good. But it's such a sweet card, such a sweet lore. Look at that. 
Look at that. All right. And finally, a Sigrid God Favor. This card just doesn't even play well in Limited for a foil rare. So it's, eh, you know, no surprises that it's kind of not taken off. All right. On to the next pack. Mm -hmm. I actually had Sigrid God Favor played against me today earlier. And it was just so underwhelming. This is not a strong card. Uh... Well, you know, it's still an above average if you compare it to commons, but for a rare, especially in this set, just not too powerful. All right, Mystic Reflection, Extended Art, Calamity Bear, Foil Rare, Maha, Dark Boar Pathway, or another Borderless Pathway, and we have, ooh, our first Foil, Borderless Bark Channel Pathway. Now, these, these don't appear as often. Um, I think one of the reasons why they don't is because there's just less of them. There's only four versus the six in Zendikar. Uh, but, uh, you know, because Caltime Collector Boosters, which I should get to talking about right now, um, are simply not as valuable, uh, all cards, all singles in these Caltime Collector Boosters kind of have dripped a little bit in value. And, and another thing that I've noticed is another reason why things rebound is because if people have the expectation that, hey, it's opening these is not profitable, then what will happen is less people will open them. And if the singles are still in demand, okay, this is a little bit of a weird, oh, you guys can see it's very subtle, kind of a little bit of weird coloring here, um, then prices will slowly go up until a point where these become worth it to open again. So that is an interesting phenomenon that we have, Righteous Valkyrie, right? And a little token. Now, we're gonna check by using TCG low prices for both of these boxes and see how well we do. I'm hoping, I'm really, really hoping that we can at least break even. So TCG player has these kind of in that 190 range, which now we're in danger territory. Now stores that bought these, like at 190, TCG player takes 12.5% in terms of fees. Um, at 190, stores definitely lose some money after shipping. So shipping these can be anywhere from about five bucks to about nine bucks, depending on the shipping style, USPS priority, first class, um, do you have any deals with UPS or whatever? Varegoth, Blood Sky, Skyer. And, oh, all right. Beautiful, gorgeous card. Kaya, the inexorable. This is the borderless version. This is the foil borderless version. I really, really think Kaya is going to be just one of those cards that sneakily sees more, more play. It's just a really powerful card. Five mana, exile, a non-land permanent, as well as getting an emblem. The plus one really doesn't do much, but, uh... You know, I think most of the time this will be played as a five mana remove a spell. Now I have a, a, a another person you have to attack. And uh, the next turn you plus one. And then the turn after that, you exile another thing. And that's just really good value already. I mean, if you can get the emblem, you've pretty much won the game. Look at that emblem. Make cast a legendary spell from your hand, from your graveyard, or from among cards you own in exile without paying its mana cost. This is the ultimate Timmy card. This is kind of a five color secret wombo you know, fun card in disguise. All right, we have four more packs. Can we Kaya and cast a Phyrexian Born Plex? Now that would be a little bit of a flavor fail because Kaya was sent to Call Time to destroy Born Plex. Is she successful? I don't know, you'll have to read the story. Skemfar Avenger. Hey, I love this card, Quake Bringer. I'm surprised this card doesn't see a little bit more play. I think it is super solid. I think we'll see this card more often once rotation happens. All right, Maha. Yorn, God of Winter, we're right of the Frost, and another Mythic God. Toroth, God of Fury, this is in the top 10 more valuable cards. We'll give it a little penny sleeve as well, happy to see it. Not as good as Fraction Voron Clex, but you know, not everything can be like that. All right, three more packs, three more packs. Let's get some goodies, let's get some goodies. Here we go. I've also gotten feedback that these collector boosters aren't so valuable because, well, they don't have any box toppers and i think that's actually a really good point but you have to understand that the box toppers that we're competing with are potential fetch lands and potential um uh, uh what, 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 wastelands and, and useful lands so zendikar rising collector boosters yeah it, it's not a surprise that those have basically never lost their value no matter how many times amazon has like a sale on them or a deal on them or other distributors or stores they're just doing well and and that's kind of a sad thing because what that tells you is you really need to have like some goodies in, in, as a potential card to, to do well as a product nowadays for Magic. 
and, and it's just magic. Like Digimon, Pokemon, um, Flesh and Blood. Those sets are doing super well. It doesn't really matter what's in the set. Pre-sales are just selling out. The price is going higher and higher. And I can't even blame it. I don't even think we can blame it on MSRP. All right, here we go. Resplendent Marshall, Center Art Mythic. Beautiful card. Just a beautiful card. Search for Glory. I love the Aurora Borealis effect. And another Kaya, the Inexorable, Borderless. And finally, we end with a Foil Extended Art Dream Devour. All right, friends. That was box number one. Let's put box number one's price here or value. See how well we did. And get straight to box number two. Big thanks again, John, for sponsoring two entire boxes of this. We really are on the hunt for the Phyrexian Vorinclex. I don't know how often it takes to get a Phyrexian Vorinclex. I want to say that, uh, you know, I got one in my first box and I haven't seen another foil version since, although we have seen the non-foil twice. Uh, so it seems like, I don't know, at least one per case is my guess. One per six boxes, but we shall see today. Fear has Retribution. Calamity Bear, Skimfar Avenger, and a our Borderless Quake Bringer. All right, Mariah the Frost, and another Foil Extended Art Pathway. Beautiful. I'm a big fan of these Foil Extended Art Pathways. Happy to see them. Give it a sleeve. All right, move my sleeves aside, and let's keep going on to the next pack. Here we go. Boop, 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 boop. We have a Pack of the Serpents, In Search of Greatness, Masswood Nexus, Ingarunize, Turgrid God of Fright, the second most valuable foil rare uh, in its foil showcase form. And we end with a Doom Scar. All right, all right, a Doom Scar. This card is going to see play. I'm actually going to try to collect one of these foil extender arts because I think it's just a nice, nice little cube card. What a great card. What an excellent card. All right. On to the next. And if you haven't noticed, I'm kind of just leaving cards that I like. That I think have potential. That I know are going to hold value. Alright, here we go. On to the next pack. Ooh, speaking of things that hold value. Binding the Old Gods. This foil version is going to be a good card. It's just such a valuable card. Look at that. It's already seeing play in multiple different standard decks. What a valuable card. Alright, the Bears of Lit Yara. Icebreaker Kraken. Extended Art, In Search of Greatness, Foil Rare, and hey, my favorite of the Borderless Cycle with Fortel, Starnheim Unleashed. Look at that. What an awesome card. Bo beautiful art. And a Foil Mythic Eradicator Valkyrie. All right. Flying Lifelink Hexproof from Planeswalkers. Okay. All right. Kind of has like, like a sort of keyword soup, but not like like you know it actually is not as good as questing beast in my opinion uh and uh, that's not a bad thing but uh, you know just green gets it all these days immersive predator raydan god of the worthy and vapmira protector shield card is very annoying to play against luckily this is legendary both sides are pretty annoying to play against to be completely honest all right all right um, Cold Forge Master, Asika's Chariot, Narfi, Betrayer King, and we end with another Foil Borderless Pathway. All right. Okay, so that's the Thai Channel Pathway. Yeah, give it a sleeve. Is that the second one we've seen of this? Yeah, that is the second Bark Channel Pathway Foil Borderless that we've seen. All right. We'll do a hit review at the end, of course. On to the next pack. Here we are. The Raven's Warning. What a beautiful card. What an awesome card as well. You may put a card you own from outside the game on top of your library. Just a really, really fun way to make best of one blue-white control decks have the ability to basically, like, you know, grab their win condition or whatever um, from their sideboard. So that's really, really fun, actually. I love playing decks like that that just have, like, this toolbox. All right, another Bark Channel Pathway, Borderless. And we end with a the world tree foil extended art how the mighty have fallen this was a 50 dollars card i believe on release or pre-release week and now i believe it's kind of in the 17 18 range i'll, I'll uh, add that later uh it is still very very you know played very often a lot of five color nonsense decks popping up in standard that use the world tree as their support engine not particularly playing any gods just caring about 
that middle paragraph, as long as you control six or more lands, lands you control have add one man of any color. That's free on a land that's green. It is a powerful effect, and it's not a legendary land either. So lots of things going for it. Cert land Flinger. Tybalt's Trickery. Oh, man. So much has happened with this card since we started opening it, and uh, I'm just going to keep it at that. Mariah of the Frost. Nico Aris. Nice. We get to see another of the Planeswalkers. Borderless version. Tearhead Judge of Valor. And a Dragonkin Berserker. I think this card is super good. Super duper good. Holy moly. I am surprised I didn't see more play. And Coma's Coil. Just think it's super good. That's all I got to say. Two mana. Two, two, first rate. Potentially can make 5-5 five, five dragons. What else is there to, to not like, you know? All right. Battle for Bredegard. Rally the Ranks. Tyrite Sanctum. Agar the Freezing Flame. Yorn, God of Winter. Fearha, Judge of Valor. And we end with a Skemfar Avenger for that pack. All right, guys. We're on to our last five packs. Still haven't even seen a Warren Clex of any flavor. They're all valuable. They are all... All flavors of the foreign classes are in the top, like, 10 most valuable cards of a set, which is a little sad, but, you know, it does attest to how popular he is as a creature. Here we go. Cleaving Reaper. Reflections of Yara. We have Toroth, God of Fury, again, with his hammer. All right. And Alrune, God of the Cosmos. All right. With Haka, Whispering Raven. On the back side, as well as a Cosima, God of the Voyage, foil showcase with the Omen Keel. All right, we'll take it. We'll take it. Okay, four more packs left. We are still in the hunt for the Vorinclex. We are just like Kaya, assigned to defeat this intergalactic menace. And I guess she's not even sure. She's probably never been to Phyrexia. This is probably all new to her. She doesn't even realize what's going on. Realm Walker. Battle for Bredegard, Cold the Forge Master, Alrune's Epiphany. Look at that. This card is an epic one. Take an extra turn after this one and create some birds. It has foretell. Cost six mana if you foretell it. Nice little powerful card right there. And a foil extender to Realm Walker. I believe these still have some value, so not too bad of a pull right there. Three more packs. All right. That is the one unfortunate thing about these collector boosters. They are very, very, very value driven. So you can't really draft or play these sealed or they're not designed to. So the only way to consume these is to convince people that it's worth opening. And when they're not worth opening, oh boy, value will crash very quickly. But on the flip hand, if they are very worth opening, the sealed boxes are gonna be hard to find. So that is just kind of what these were, you know, were designed to do. Um, so I think that one way Wizards can make these collector boosters continue to have kind of like this collector value in keeping them sealed is to continue to increase that gambler's premium. So having a Frexian Boron Clex, that was a nice one. I think if they just had another card that was really worth chasing, these collector boosters could at least stabilize a little bit. All right, here we go. Another one. All right, Orvar the All Form. This is, of course, one of the best pulls we've had as well. Orvar is kind of in the honorable mention top five more valuable cards its foil showcase version is in that top 20 most valuable cards as well all right top five unique most valuable is what i mean all right finally the very last pack for jono how are we gonna get that born clicks come on now let's see it cosmic intervention that's what we need we need cosmic intervention dream devourer immerser and predator maha hinge gate pathway nice little borderless all right, here's the other side by Elena Danner. All right, all right. And finally, we end with a foil extended art in search of greatness, leaving us in search for greatness. All right, guys, that's the box opening. Let's go through the hits real quick. Um, I'll just start with the little borderless cards. Here we are. Lots of good borderless cards. And personally, the cards that I like the most, I sleeved up. So I'll show those off to you guys. Starting off with the Orvar, the All Form, Foil Extender at the World Tree, Foil Extender at Doomscar, Foil Extender at Mythic, Goldspan Dragon, Bar Channel Pathway, Foil Borderless, Bloodset Pathway, Foil Borderless, Foil Showcase, Toroth God of Fury, Foil Borderless, Kaya the Inexorable, and a Foil Borderless Bar Channel Pathway number two. All right, guys. Hey, guys, it's Cosmo Michael, and we're back with just a little quick note. 
I didn't realize, but these tokens are actually worth something. This one is from box one. The human warrior angel token is a dollar. And actually a slew of tokens. So the angel warrior, dwarf berserker, cat treasure, replicated ring, treasure, comas coil, elf warrior, troll warrior, elf warrior, and an icy manolith human warrior. Ends up coming to about $13.25 value on that box number two. So here are the updated values of those two boxes. You could count these as value you know if you want to but for those guys who are selling singles on tcg player don't overlook tokens like i did all right thank you guys again i'll see you on the next one